Tichel Jokno. You've been offering your services pro bono in a number of human rights cases, uh, flag chairman, but to many Filipinos facing charges or those who want to file cases, the only way to be represented in court is the public attorney's office. So how do you propose to strengthen this office that's become wildly political in many ways and improve its personnel and services? There are some, there are some inherent... There are some inherent conflicts of interest in the present public attorney's office. They represent both the complainants and the respondents. That should change. That is in, provided in the charter, but I don't understand the rationale for that. What happens is that um, when people come to them for assistance, poor people, they help them file the complaint. But when the case reaches the court, the public attorney say, oh, sorry, we cannot handle that case kasi kami ang tumulo sa kanila nung nagsampa sila ng kaso. So, ang, ang, ang nagiging epekto ay nawawalan ng representasyon ang mga mahihirap. Kailangan magbago yan. The real intention of the public attorney's office has always been to be a public defender para makatulong sa mga mahihirap, sa mga kasong kriminal. Kailangan hindi mawawala yung tungkulin na yan. The public attorney's office as well has to have a more professional approach in terms of their gathering of evidence. Because, for example, in the case of the Dengvaxia, they have not allowed other experts, forensic pathologists and others, to examine the evidence. And I think it's about time that they accept the fact that when we talk about evidence, that can cut across everybody. All experts should be allowed uh, access to that evidence so that we really know what is true and what is not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've been talking a lot about the law and justice in our country. That's the basis of your platform. But in terms of different administrations, everyone in power has at some point bent the law against political enemies. How do you prevent that? And how do you prevent, made your personal, this one, how do you prevent the lines being pushed so far that the law can be broken by people in power? We need a justice system that is independent. We need a justice system that can stand up to political pressure. How do we do that? Number one, we have to change the way we appoint our judges. Sobrang utang na loob nila sa Pangulo. Kaya pag may pumapasok sa kanilang kaso, yung mga backer nila ang involved o mismo ang Malacanang, wala na silang magawa. Pangalawa, dapat tigilin na ni Pangulo at ng pamahalaan yung paggamit ng listahan. They have weaponized lists. If you recall, very early in this administration, the president came out with a narco list that included the name of a dead judge. But imagine the impact of that on the living judges. Ang naisip ng mga judge, eh kung yung patay nga na judge ay nailagay doon yung pangalan, paano pa kaya kami? In that single stroke, that destroyed the independence of the judiciary. Followed by the attack on the Chief Justice, the removal of Chief Justice Sereno, that laid the last nail on the coffin of judicial independence. We cannot have any kind of real democracy without an independent judiciary. Kailangan na kailangan natin yan kasi sa, sa, kung tutuusin, they are the last bastion and the last protection we have to any kind of authoritarian government. The attack, for example, the use of, of guns in the war on drugs, sa akin hindi lang ang mahihirap ang natatamaan yan. Mismo yung ating sistemang legal ang inaatake niyan. By using justice from the barrels of guns, they are actually devaluing justice from our courts. And when that happens, when we lose all meaning in terms of our legal system, only an authoritarian government will be capable of maintaining order. We have to stand up to that. We cannot allow that to happen. Thank you. 